Hey everybody, we are back. I'm Drac. I'm Shadow. Am I, just... I Drac? Yes, you're Drac. I'm suffering an identity crisis. But you also know me, the Fighting Freak Knuckles. Exactly. Welcome to our Let's Play of Jack and Daxter the Precursor Legacy, and also to Death Fest, the original Death Fest, and then Sonic 3 is Death Fest Part D. D. You died again, yeah. see? Stop dying. I know. I suck. You know somebody's gonna put in the comments, You guys gotta stop dying on camera! Dude, they're funny. They they just happened and they shouldn't have happened. I, I'm a much better game than this. I promise. It's the Let's Play Curse. It is. And that's ultimately why we actually need the ready That guy gets a shield and he can't kill him. Shielded enemies. It's almost like we're playing Star Trek or something. Speaking of another movie that Alex needs to go see... Star Trek. Yes. Yeah, not interested, Adam. Oh, you really aren't? No. Oh, dude, you, you totally should. Well, if you haven't seen the first one, then yeah. The, there's probably no point, because you, you, it's not going to make sense to you. Right. And I didn't see the first one. I've what, never what are you trying to say, Alex? Do you hate J.J. Abrams? No, I don't hate J.J. Abrams. Oh, okay. I'm nothing against... he's making Star Wars. Yes, I have nothing against J.J. Abrams. I'm just not a Star Trek fan, that's all. <laughs> I actually liked a, a joke I saw online where uh, somebody was saying, J.J. Abrams, the only one to make Star Wars and Star Trek fans confused about their faith. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> because he will be in charge of Star Trek and Star Wars. You can't factionize at that point. Because your your complaint against the other will be J.J. Abrams. Oh, but J.J. Abrams did Star Wars, which I like, so I can't make fun of Star Trek. <laughs> That'll be an interesting discussion to be had on forums. You know, can you make fun of Star Trek or Star Wars anymore? Because they are going to be done by the same guy. And yes, you can. But it'll be fun to see people go through like this major identity crisis. They can't be diehard Star Trek controllers anymore. And of course, we didn't walk down here with Red Eco, so you're gonna see how pointless this is. Are you just about to say you're going to die? I'm about to die. See, there you go. And we're inside the monster! No! Mechanics. How do they work? Occasionally they don't. <laughs> Somebody decided that, you know, this all-encompassing camera eventually would have to go into inside enemies to view the view. But they didn't realize that it doesn't give you a great view at all. And there you go, power cell. And this is going to be power cell number 70, I think. Dude. Two, but technically one more. Because we also have enough precursor orbs to get another power cell. Oh, nice. I love how it's uh, mandatory for like any snow level to have the bells. Yes. Some kind of jingling bells, either in the music or you have to ring the bell or. Seriously. Somebody ought to just do like some compilation. Christmas game where it's just all the snow levels of every game. <laughs> Reminds me of Donkey Kong 3 where you could uh, um, use a special cheat to play Christmas music in the levels. Really? Yeah. Well, not like the, your licensed co commercial Christmas songs, but it would like make everything into sort of a Christmassy arrangement. Dude, I, yeah, because I never played Donkey Kong Country 3, so that would be interesting to see. Yes. I'm a Donkey Kong Country fan. I'm a Rare fan, but I didn't play the third one. And that's just because I was a teenager and apparently was interested in the more emo stuff. Yes, Yeah, I still emo. can't explain it to myself either. People don't know off screen. Alex is giving me an evil look. He's deserving of giving me an evil look. <laughs> it's what you go through. I mean, like, during that era, it was, like, you had to play stuff that was darker. 
Well, that's kind of the era we're, we're just in with a lot of movies now. It's like, oh, especially when you like start getting into like reboots of older stuff, like whether it be Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Batman, it's like, oh, it's going to be dark. It's going to be gritty. Dude, I'm not saying everything needs to be hammy or light or anything. No. I don't mind dark and gritty, but I'm thinking at the same time, not everything needs to be dark and gritty. Well, and the other thing also is that because of this frame of mind, um, and I've, I've covered this a couple of times even with Alex, is the medium has become just saturated with anti-heroes. Yeah, and really. And here's the thing. Anti-heroes are interesting, but not when they're used all the time. Mm -hmm. I still like genuine heroes. In fact, you know, I've seen Man of Steel, and one of my complaints that people have listened to me on radio is, is that Superman can be a genuine guy, but was written as an anti-hero. Well, that doesn't work. And there are even series where an anti-hero is just... The medium is so oversaturated that they don't do well. I'd like to point out the Darksiders franchise is one of those the victims of that. It's because we had to write an emo anti-hero. And that person has to be the person we care about the entire time. Even though we don't really care about him. Right. Seriously. You know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. The fact that you need to make stories dark doesn't really work. Right. You know. And I could go to like a. See, death fest, right? <laughs> Just pointless deaths. I mean, really. It's almost like I have hatred for Jack or something. Um, yeah, I don't think we really need a hard R reboot of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. No. Whatever you may think of the. You know, up and coming Michael Bay production of the next one. Whatever you may think of it. I don't know. Whatever. It's okay, we agree with you. Megan Fox shouldn't be able Yes, to. really. But. Uh, I mean, it will likely be for teenagers, of course, but that's what they are. They're Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, that's, for God's sake. That's the demographic that they're feeding. I mean, even, the, like, I, I know a lot of people who are diehard into the original series mm -hmm. who hate the new Nickelodeon series. There's nothing wrong with the new Nickelodeon series. It's just catering to kids today, whereas that series that you love catered to kids in your day. Right. So if you have the love, great, go buy the DVD box sets and move on. Don't knock Nickelodeon just because they decided to go in a more kid-ish direction, and by kid-ish I mean kids of this day and age. Right. That's what they're going to do. I mean, I've seen a lot of series that I loved as a kid growing up do this. And it's fine. Oh. Go. There you go. <laughs> you die a lot. I do die a lot. This is Death Fest after all. It's like it, it really is like I'm sitting there going, okay, so another power cell I can get here, or can I just kill myself to get back to the entrance? Yeah, good thing there's no real life system. No. No, that's one of the things that made this game good, and I think the other two games follow the same kind of medium. They will let you die however many times you want. And that's a good idea, especially if you're trying to launch a new platform series, to just give people that option. What Mario did back in the day worked then. It's not going to work now. Yeah, really. Because kids will throw down the controller and, and not want to play more. They're not like my generation where they got so pissed at Mario that they just wanted to beat it just to sh shove that in its face. Yeah, I mean, back then you were pretty limited. If you rented Mario for a weekend, well, that's all you got for the weekend, probably. Exactly. Today, you know, we've got you can easily just as easily move on to something else if you don't like what you're playing. Exactly. I mean, you can easily take your Mario game, go exchange it for something that you're going to enjoy more. Or, in a lot of cases now, you know, we don't have... Back in the day, we used to have video stores. We don't have that anymore, now do we, Alex? Nope. Now you just have Gamefly. Or Netflix. So, and there we go. Power Cell number 71. Yes, Alex, we're done. Yep. Because we have enough Precursor Orbs to go and get 72. Yay! But of course, you get to see me sit there and go, oh, should I go for this power cell or not? So I decide to. And let me guess, you die. <laughs> of course. And decide it's ultimately not worth it. There you go. <laughs> and I'm back here. So, since I have 71 and don't need to worry about the 70 second. You just say screw it. I just say screw it. For those who are actually going to say in the comments that you give up easily, yes, I do. If it's not worth it, yes, I do. 
consistency. There are games like on the NES where I would put the extra effort out, like Ninja Gaiden, which is considered the hardest NES game on that platform. I would put the effort for that because that was worth it. This ending is not. But that's okay. Because we're still gonna we're gonna finish this thing. And for those who want to see the hundred power cell ending, we'll work for you too. Yep. We're just going to support somebody else in the YouTube community who's willing to go through the punishment, whereas we are not. It's not that we don't care about you, but it's because we don't want to, you know, destroy our sanity. Mm -hmm. And back down to Volcanic Crater we are going. Because the elevator went down the hole. That it did. Lucky Duck reference always works. I was just going to say cookie to whoever gets the reference, but you gave that away already, so Baby I can't Plucky. give her cookies. I love Baby Plucky. I know. I really wish I could find out where Baby Plucky was. I, I'm thoroughly convinced he was an animaniac. Uh, he was Tiny Toons. A power cell is the reward. And he'll get us next time. And there we go, 72 power cells, guys. So let's go ahead and finish this, shall we? What? Magic cut! So now that we have enough power cells, we can go into the lava tube. Yeah, it sounds like we don't have any odds for survival, does it? No. That's they... exactly how we want it. But we're going in anyway. Why? Because we have to? I guess so. It's the only way that you beat the game? It's the only way that you can save the princess? Well, I guess there is no princess in this game. No. So we can't defeat King Koopa and save the princess. Darn it. And there's Kira with our zoomer. Right. With these additional power cells, I should be able to supply the heat shield with enough power to stand up to this lava. But the shield still has a limit. It will now withstand temperatures up to 800 degrees, but no more. So keep an eye on your gauge. I don't want to think about what those temperatures would do to your zoomer if the shield gives out. <laughs> yeah, the heat. What? The zoomer? Hey, what about us? Don't you think we could look for a safer route to Gull Citadel? Look, I've released more cooling balloons into the tube, so you can use them to keep the temperature down. And don't forget to activate the teleport gate in the Yellow Sage's lab. We're counting on you. So if you figured out what this is supposed to be, basically, mm -hmm. this is our first zoomer section advanced. So again, we have to make sure the temperature is down, but it is a longer section. So a longer time to maintain the temperature and get through. I actually like this course a little bit better than the first one in Fire Canyon. It just works better for me. It's it really kind of showcases a lava level. Yeah, it's really nice. And in the meantime, we have to make sure to stay out of the lava so that we don't raise the temperature of the zoomer. And you gotta hit the balloons. Yep. Yeah. Now, keep in mind, guys, there was a death fest here too. I have edited it down. You don't get to see all the pointless deaths I had. Sorry. This is an interesting part of this. Uh, section is because technically this is like the Yellow Sage's lab. Right. So you have to open up the door. But we're already having to worry about temperature. So that's going to be kind of fun. So even this gimmick makes me think of a Donkey Kong game. Yeah. It really does. It, it really feels like a rare mechanic. And nothing wrong with that. Just ah. we could get better rare games. Come on. Please. Microsoft. Nothing stop making internet exports. Now, uh, just for the record, you don't make it. Three, two, five. We split a bit. We exported. We painted the pavement. We are a red asphalt movie. That we are. Did you ever get those when you were in high school? Yes, I. We got those. Nice. We got the red asphalt films. Because, like, current, I've heard uh, kids this day and age, they don't do that. Which is bullcrap. Yeah. If we had to go through it, then you do too. It's not because some of, the, some of them are, 
you know, fairly gross, but at the same time, you're just like sitting there going, yeah, we get what they're trying to teach. Oh, no. Exactly. But, but yeah, now this, kids this day and age, they could be too traumatized from the experience. <laughs> and we exploded again. We did. But it's okay, we edited out all the other explosions that we had. And this is where it also gets interesting because we have Yellow Eco, which means we have to blast stuff. Blaster! Blast processing! See, we got a Sonic reference. <laughs> And for the record, that last section that we had, yeah, there were a couple of deaths. Just because platforming on the Zoomer doesn't really work, and they wanted it to. So Na Naughty Dog learned their lesson. Thing. There isn't that in the rest of the course. Oh, and you can see the power cell in the distance. Yeah. And man, for a lab, the Yellow Sage is really kind of... He's skimping on the money. Because that... You'll see in a second. That's the only thing that we get as a reference to the lab. The portal. Wow. Hey! Where's old short, green, and wrinkly? This is terrible. Father is missing. I think Gall and Maya may have kidnapped him as well. Relax, sweetheart. I got everything under control. Under control? Lurker armies continue to grow across the land. The sages have been kidnapped. Gaul and Maya have gathered enough eco to complete their terrible plan, and to stop them, you're going to have to fight your way through their citadel. Uh, yeah. That about, uh, sums it up. You've got to rescue my father before it's too late. And Jack, be careful. Yeah, we will be. Jack's a little irritated, or Daxter's a little irritated. <laughs> All right, so now we are going to start up Gull and Maya Citadel. And obviously it looks a little bit like some of the other precursor stuff we've seen. It's about time you two decided to show up. Nice to see you, too. Do they have you mopping the floors now? There's no time for jokes, Daxter. Gull and Maya kidnapped us to sap our energies to power their abominable machine. It appears they have combined the functional remains of a precursor robot with scavenged artifacts from across the land. Then they added a few diabolical additions of their own, creating the one thing capable of opening the dark eco silos. If you can free the four of us, we can use our combined powers to break the force shield surrounding the robot before they use it to destroy the world. Of course. Of course. Because they're going to destroy the world for one billion dollars. So yeah, that's the goal of Goal and Maya Citadel, is to free the sages so that they can help us out in getting the barrier off the robot, and we can destroy it. Before they use it to go and get a bunch of Dark Eco that, you know, could potentially harm them. And of course, platforming galore! If you aren't going to get enough of your platforming fix in this game, I have no idea what you're going to do. Platforming on pizza slices. <laughs> exactly, pretty much. It's platforming, Alex. It's platforming. I don't know why I did that in Regis Hillman, but I did. <laughs> I thought you were just doing Daxter. They are pretty close, aren't they? And of course, there's also this is also considered a an area, so there will be like other power cells that you can get, one including scout flies. So not only do you have to complete the other areas, but you also have to complete the Citadel to get all of its power cells. Oh. You get one death, just to showcase what, what the problem is here, and then I do it right. Ooh. There you go. Platforming is fun. Yes, it is. Very fun. Indeed. Okay, so this is this is a pain in the butt section in Golem My Citadel, is we get a nice little gauntlet of the little lurkers. 
and they decide to be really stupid. And Naughty Dog gives you the eco you don't need to take them on until later. Well, that's typical. Yeah, pretty much. And you also have to start up these, or stop these, so that they stop making. Uh, and we're getting really close to death. Can I do it? Can you do it? I don't know. Can I'm, I do it, sucker? I'm kind of doubting it. Switch off my targeting computer. Well, that's good. I'm, I'm not Porkins or Luke or whoever. I just wanted to reference Porkins. Because Porkins! And now we're like down to the last two, maybe three, so I have to sit there and just twirl until they run into me. And there we go. And that's going to do it. We will come back after freeing the sage. Once again, I am Drag. I'm Shadow. And you'll see you in a bit.